Okay, so chapter 18 is endothermic vertebrate. They generate their own body heat. And we're going to start right off at the beginning with birds. Okay, they're the first ones that we're going to study are the birds. They're in the class AVs. Uh, you probably heard of like an aviary where they have a place where they have birds. If you go to the zoo, you know, they have that, the aviary, aviary where they have different kinds of birds that live there. And they, they make it in such a way that the birds are free to kind of fly around and do their own thing. Um, so what are some characteristics of birds? Well, no matter what bird you're talking about, they all have feathers. It doesn't mean the feathers all look alike, but they all have feathers. Um, they all have four limbs that are configured to be some type of wing uh, for flight. Now, are there flightless birds? Yes, there are birds that can't fly. Now, there, if you put into that category the birds like the penguins, they just don't fly in air, they fly in water. They use their wings to fly through the water instead. But then there's some birds, you know, like ostriches that have wings, but, you know, it's not for flying. Uh, they will sometimes, you know, pull their wings out to look like really big so they can hopefully scare off the predator. But uh, the wings are adjustable. I mean, if you've ever watched birds fly, uh, like birds taking off, especially if it's a large bird that's taking off, the way they use their wings at first to take off is quite different than when if they're just flying, you know, flapping along to go from one place to another. And they do something even still different if they're just gliding. Like a lot of birds of prey, you know, will spend a lot of time gliding, looking down at the earth, looking for prey. And then when they come in for a landing, they, their wings are adjustable so that they can slow up and not just go flying right past the wing and hope to catch it. You know, they, they can slow up so, so gently that they just kind of just gently sit down on whatever they're. Their bones are thin and hollow. You, pro you may have noticed that if you ever ate a, like a drumstick, a turkey drumstick or a, a chicken drumstick, and if you have, it, it got broken, you can see that the bone is hollow, and then the, the thicker or the harder part of the bone is pretty thin. So it, it, it has a lot of hollow space, and hollow space makes them lighter. Okay? To, make, to have solid bones like we have, that's one of the reasons why we'd have a hard time flying, because our bones are so heavy. But God didn't make us fl to fly, even though man has always wanted to fly, and we figured out ways we still can fly, but it doesn't work like Icarus to strap wings onto our body and, and try to fly. Now, there, we've figured out different ways to have wings. You've probably seen those people that, with their suits, that they can go flying along at very high speeds, I mean, uh, or some of them actually have have almost like a wing, and then they actually have jet engines on on their wing, so they can go really fast. Uh, but their burnt, their bones are thin and hollow, and uh, that makes them lighter. Uh, inside those hollow spaces, they have lots of little. Uh, tiny bony structures that help give it strength without making it totally thick and solid. Uh, and that makes, you know, makes them still be able to stay light and still have a, a, a strong bone. And their, and their bones are pretty, you know, are pretty strong. Uh, what was it, a couple days ago, my wife, something hit the door, front door, and uh, she did, wasn't sure what made that noise, but I walked outside and looked, and there on the door was the imprint of the bird that had run into the, into the storm door. Probably, it looked like it, at the very last minute, it realized that was a window, but he was going too fast to stop and just thumped it. But you could see the outline of its wings, that it must have been out like this when he thumped it. But, you know, their body is still pretty resilient, 
And as we'll learn a little bit about feathers, feathers do help to cushion the blow when they <laughs> run into something. Where we lived in Phoenix, uh, we had lots of big windows on the south side of our house, and it was common for birds to fly into it. It would be bright outside and, the, and dark on the inside of the house, and so it was like a mirror. And they would fly, and then I think some, sometimes it didn't even look like they'd even realize it until they hit it that they that's just glass. That's not. <laughs> that's really. That's just a reflection of what's behind me. Yeah. Um, now, birds also have two lungs. You know, so they breathe air, and their respiratory uh, uh, system has two lungs. But what makes them unique is that these lungs are actually connected often to air spaces that they have. Um, in different parts of their body uh, or even inside their bones. Some of the lungs are actually attached to hollow places inside their own bones. So that it, in, in effect it makes their uh, ability to absorb, take in oxygen a lot bigger because it's actually bigger than their lungs are themselves. Uh, they're endothermic, that means they have to generate body heat. Well, to generate body heat, you have to spend energy. So birds typically are like high energy animals. They need to have a steady supply of food. They don't do well with if you don't feed them. You know, they need to have a high energy uh, requirement. Um, so, and they have to have rapid access to it. So. The kind of foods they eat are going to have to be able to give them that uh, source of energy. They have a very high metabolism. What often goes with animals that have a high metabolism, you will notice that they have a pretty high heart rate, and they also breathe pretty fast because of that. I don't know if any of you have ever held a bird in your hand. I mean, sometimes you can actually feel their little heart just fluttering away really fast. You know, their heart beats much faster than ours. You know, probably at least two to, f I would say two to four times faster than our hearts beat. You know, your normal heart rate probably, with those of you sitting here, might be 60, 70. No, their heart rate's probably in, probably at the low end of 120, maybe, but more normal around like 240 beats a minute. If your heart was doing that, we'd think something, you were, something was wrong with you, if your heart would beat that fast. But Theirs has to beat that fast just because they have a very high metabolic rate and they also have to breathe pretty fast uh, to do that. Now, their body temperature is higher than ours, isn't it? Ours is like 98.6 on the Fahrenheit or 37 in Celsius. Uh, if you take 98.6, I mean, this is almost uh, eight degrees higher than that. If you had that body temperature, we would think what? If you were, had a body temperature of 106, <coughs> you, uh, yeah, if you aren't doing something soon, that could lead to that, yeah. That you are very ill, and we need to do something to lower your body temperature, because uh, you must be very ill to have that high a body temperature. So, but to them, that's normal, you know. But they also have a lot more surface area to body mass, and we talked about that early in the year that as the mass increases, you know, the surface area doubles. Well, in reverse, they have, a, so they have a pretty small mass for a pretty large, so they have to have some ways of reducing their body heat. If, if they want to maintain that, they have to have some way of keeping them from losing so much body heat. And so their body is typically covered with feathers, right? Um, so, uh, but they have no teeth, so they don't use their beak for chewing. They use it maybe to like crack seeds or uh, maybe like peel off the, the outside of a nut or something like that. Uh, or they have a hook on the end of their beak so they can tear out flesh, you know, like the Raptors have the eagles and the, the hawks that we have around here. Uh, 
those of you that were up at Camp Kelly Crest, man, there were a lot of eagles flying there, weren't there? Just lots of eagles. Uh, that, I think it's, we're not too far from, what is it, uh, DeSoto Bend, where they do have a lot of eagles in that area. So, I like fish and amphibians and most reptiles, you know, who, who do have teeth, birds don't have teeth, it's not, they have a beak that's specialized for the way they get their food. And it's made out of a material, they call it horny material, uh, like the same stuff that you maybe think of like a horn is made out of. It's pretty tough, but it's not like solid like bone. It's, it has a little bit of flexibility to it, uh, but it's lighter. That's the important thing about it being made out of that as opposed to like being made out of the same material our teeth would be and make it heavier. Uh, they are oviparous. What does that mean? Okay, they lay eggs and they have to be hatched from an egg. Um, so they keep uh, keeping their developing young in the nest uh, rather than carrying them around in their body. What would be the advantage of laying an egg as opposed to carrying them around like mammals do? Yeah, make it lighter, right? You don't have to carry your babies everywhere you go when you're out flying. Now, you have to have some way of keeping them warm while you're gone, and so often they have, if mom's gone, they often have dad sitting on the legs, right? Or, you know, so they have, you know, God's, you think about all these things that, you know, okay, they lay eggs to make them lighter, but they have to go out and get food then there's nothing keeping the eggs warm, so they will hatch, so we need to have another bird sit on the eggs to keep them warm. Uh, or like penguins. I mean, do you remember on the video that, I th did we watch some video with the penguins? Mom lays the eggs, and then shortly after that, she does what? She leaves? She leaves the dad with the eggs. Yeah, she leaves dad with the eggs. And where does dad keep the egg? Remember where the penguins keep the eggs? Yeah, right more actually on, like on top of their feet. And then when they walk, you know, they, can you imagine trying to walk and keep something on your toes at the same time? They also have what helping them? Remember they have the, the belly fat that kind of flops over all the way down to their toes, which, so the egg is underneath there being kept warm. Okay, while mom, who's lost a lot of energy in this process of producing an egg and things like that, needs to go build up her reserves again, so she and the rest of the moms head out back to the ocean to feed, and dad stands there for days on end, keeping little, the little guy all warm so he'll hatch out, but you know, only one egg at a time. You can't have two eggs because that's a problem, isn't it? He only has one, one bare legs to keep, keep it on there. So they don't lay two eggs. Like a lot of birds around here that you probably looked in the nest, you might find, you know, two, three, four, five eggs inside the nest. Uh, so, you know, if you think about all these things that God knew about when he created that animal so that it would have all the features that it needed to be able to survive under those conditions. Uh, so, we said that the feathers, that one of their jobs is to retain body heat, they, to keep them warm. And, and you think about it, we have a lot of uh, Canada geese, well, different kinds of geese, that stay around here all winter. And they go out, use, most of them, once the ponds freeze over, where do they go? They have to have water, so where's the only place that's not frozen yet in the middle of winter? where we live. It's not the ponds, they have to go to where? <coughs> like out the Missouri River. So if you often watch in the morning, they're all flying back away from the river to some place where they can get food, some field where the farmer has left 
you know, has spilled some of the grain on the ground for them to, to graze and, and get the seeds and stuff like that. And then at night, you see them going back the other way. Uh, those of you that were at Camp Calvin Crest, you notice at night they were all headed back to, I think that's what, the Platte, is that the Platte River? That, I think it was the Platte River that was next to Camp Calvin Crest. But they were all headed back to the river because that's the place at night. But you think about it, that water has ice floating in it. So you know what temperature it is. It's pretty close to freezing. And these birds are just nice, toasty, warm. So how do they, how do they keep warm floating in the water? Now, here's a question that last year in physical science, how, do, how are feathers able to keep us warm? Remember that? How do they keep us warm? Because they have many air spaces, right? Air pockets. They have lots of air pockets in there. That's one of the reasons why when it's cold, we often suggest that you wear layers of clothes instead of just one big heavy coat. Because in between each layer, you can trap some air that helps to hold in your body heat. And then the beauty of that is, is that if it's one of those days where it warms up during the day, I can just start peeling one layer off. Whereas I, either my choice is either to keep a coat on until I'm too hot or take it off too early and then I'm cold. Now, but they're in water. What, how well, or how good a job do wet feathers do at keeping you warm? They don't, right? You've ever been in a sleeping bag and it got wet? Does it keep you warm? No, it makes you feel cold. So what about these geese out there? How do they, how do they stay warm if they're floating in water? Yeah, they waterproof it, okay? They waterproof their feathers. Um, and we'll get to that in a moment. Let's just kind of finish up this slide right here. The feathers do serve as kind of a cushion. I'm sure when my bird flew into my front door that the feathers that they had with the air spaces in there probably helped to cushion them when they smacked into the door. Um, so it does protect them. I mean, they're not going around colliding all the time, but you know, it does protect them. The main reason for it is probably to retain body heat and then also uh, to help them with flying, right? They need feathers to be able to fly. Uh, you take pull all the feathers off of a bird and it flies about as good as we do. Uh, now, feathers on, on them, you know, are many different colors. Some of them are very colorful. Uh, like, what was it? Within the last week, I saw that the cardinals were back. Uh, Mom and dad cardinal. Uh, the, the dads have, are brightly colored. Mom is pretty drab colored. Now, you think that wouldn't be fair, but... When you think of their, the, the mother's job, do you want mom to be brightly colored? No, she attracts attention of predators. Whereas dad can just fly away, mom is trying to protect the, the brood of eggs that she has. So to keep mom from being noticed by the predator, she has pretty drab colors. You know, exactly what what they need to be able to, you know, God knew that they needed to be drab colored like that, okay? But to attract mates, you know, the male needs to have the bright colors. So like the male cardinal is a really nice bright red color. Mom is, yeah, she has some reddish, but it's like a reddish <coughs> brownish or reddish gray or brown, uh, reddish brown, maybe that kind of color. So let's look at the feathers. Uh, the place where a feather uh, attaches to the skin uh, is called the papilla. So where the feather attaches to the skin is the papilla. It's sort of in, similar to you know where your hair follicle is, where you have your hair sticking out. Uh, then they have this part of the feather right there called the rachis. And the rachis are, are all these little pieces that go out from the center, which is called the quill. 
You know, if you've talked to, uh, you know, in older times, they used to write everything using ink and a quill. You know, they dip it into the ink. Now the quill was often cut sort of back like this. So it had a, had a point to it. And then when you dipped it into the ink, the, the, the hollow part of the feather would also hold uh, some of the ink. And uh, so we have the papilla, the rachis, and the quill. Uh, as parts of the feathers. If you look at the rachis part, uh, this is made up of, of two parts that kind of interlock with each other. When a bird preens themselves with their bill, they're trying to make these all fit together so that when, so the feathers are all smooth. I don't know if you've probably seen some feathers that kind of we say sometimes when something ruffled their feathers, the birds will work at trying to smooth them back out. Because ruffled feathers don't fly as well through the air. It creates air, air resistance or friction. Uh, oops, I'm sorry, got you guys instead. Did I get you? Just a little bit. Just a little bit, okay. I was shooting over the top of you. Uh, so here's a bird preening themselves. So uh, Logan said that birds preen themselves, and what they do is back right at the base of their tail, they have an oil gland. And they will take their beak and squeeze the gland, and then they'll have the oil on the, on the bill. And then they will, as you can see this bird is doing right here, will take the bill and kind of run it. Sometimes they'll do it like this as they're running along the, the bill, I mean the, the feather, to coat the feather with oil because we know that oil and water don't mix, right? And so it keeps them dry. And so the, the, the geese that are out floating in the river are actually in a nice air watertight cocoon. So yeah, and if you, uh, I've seen some pictures that are like little movie clips that somebody took of of birds in the water that were, uh, you know, uh, flopping around in the water, you know, kind of like bathing, like, and you, sometimes the water will, uh, you know, like a, a drop of the water will land up on their back, and it just, it, it just bounces and rolls off of them because of the oil that they have coated all their feathers with. So that's called preening. Uh, now, feathers, they have like two primary kinds of feathers. They have what we call the contour feathers. There's actually a third kind they call flight feathers. Those are the ones that are on the wings or maybe on the tail to help them to fly. But they have the contour feathers. So the ones that you see on the outside of the bird are called contour feathers. Uh, the, as I said, they cover most of the body. Uh, the flight feathers are actually this kind. They're nice and smooth that, that cover the wings or give their body a nice streamlined shape. Then there's this kind right here that are called down. Notice that these feather, feathers are not nice and smooth. They're, have, they're kind of like every which way, but the beauty of that kind is that they trap air. And air is a great insulator we learned last year in physical science. Uh, it keeps, uh, you know, like body heat, so we, we, you can buy like a down-filled sleeping bag, you can buy uh, like a down-filled pillow, you could have a down-filled uh, coat. Uh, I guess you could have a comforter that, that was down-filled. So down is just made of fuzzy, fuzzy little feathers that they have um, to, uh, to trap air spaces. They actually are very warm uh, pillows. Um, if you like the really soft kind of pillows, that's the kind you want. I, I like mine to have a little firmness to it, but I know when I was in high school, we had to have that kind because that <laughs> didn't have the foam pillows like they had today. Uh, and it was they were very comfortable at uh, night. Where I lived in Oklahoma in winter, it, the temperature in our room, because we didn't have any 
uh, heat in the upstairs. The top floor had no heat, so the temperature at night could drop below freezing. And then we, how do I know it dropped below freezing? Because in the morning when I got ready and I looked down in the sink, the water in the trap in the sink was frozen. So it had to be below 32, how much, I don't know. But, but we would sleep in bed, we'd uh, wear thermal underwear, right? So that was our first, and, and thermal underwear is the kind that has lots of little bumps in it, so it has air spaces. We put socks on to keep our feet warm. Uh, the, the sheets were flannel, so they, have, they were fuzzy on the surface, so they don't uh, take heat away from your body as quickly. And also, the since they're fuzzy, they have a little bit of, again, insulation. And then, uh, to keep your face warm, or your head warm, we would take the, a downfilled sleep uh, pillow, put it on edge, and then put our head down it, and it would wrap right around our face, and the only thing that would stick out would be our nose and our mouth. But the rest of it was just totally nice and warm. It, so it was basically your whole head was in a, so, except on the top where you have hair to, to keep you warm. But it was very effective in, uh, uh, it was very effective in keeping us warm. Just hated to get up in the morning, you know. Um, so that's down. Uh, now the only thing, if some of you have ever had down pillows, what happens? These little pointy ends will stick out through the feathers, I mean through the fabric, and then you'll end up pulling them out. Uh, they kind of, this, the pointy, you know, these, they're not like stickers, like from a cactus or anything like that, but you can feel it poking. Now, what's this guy doing? Looks, it looks like he's had a rough day. Well, this bird is molting. They will shed uh, their feathers and replace them with new feathers. Okay, their life is such, you know, that where these feathers are rubbing up against other things and becoming tattered and torn, and they need to be replaced. And, and feathers that work properly are going to keep them warm, going to help them with flying, you know. Uh, and so they will end up losing some of their feathers. And they are, uh, they don't look very good during that time. But the interesting thing is it's a gradual process. They don't lose all the feathers at once. That would be really bad. Because a, a bird that relies on flight to uh, escape wouldn't be able to fly. You just jump off the off the branch and go flop into the ground, you know. So they just lose some of them at a time, but eventually they'll be totally replaced. Uh, you obviously they're not going to be molting at this time of the year because they need their feathers to keep them warm. So it's going to be if they are birds that migrate, they're going to do that where it's still warm yet before they, uh, you know, when they molt. If it's a bird that um, stays here year round, uh, they're going to molt when it's a lot warmer, maybe like towards the end of summer or something like that. Uh, now, the birds' skeletons, we talked about the bones being hollow, so they have a lot of air spaces in there uh, to make them light. Now, here's an interesting thing about their, the birds have a lot of vertebrae in their neck. In other words, these bones from the bottom of my head to my shoulders right here are called my cervical vertebrae. And a bird like, a, let's say, like a stork or a, uh, we have the uh, cranes, you know, that fly through central uh, Nebraska on their migration, where my daughter lives in Kearney. They, uh, I think their city seal has a picture of the sandhill crane in there. Uh, they, so they have really long necks. Flamingos have long necks. You know, you can think of all the birds with long necks. They have the same number of birds in their birds, bones in their neck as hummingbirds. Hummingbirds have just as many bones in their neck as the stork. So what has to be different? What do you think? That would have to be different. Yeah, the hummingbird has really small bones, and the stork has the bones. Each bone is longer, you know, to make that long neck. Uh, hummingbirds don't need a long neck. 
you know? They have a, a beak, and then they have their, uh, they can put, you know, their little tongue down into the flower to, uh, you know, get uh, nectar. They don't need to have a long neck. Whereas other birds need long necks because they're sticking it down underneath the water and trying to fish for stuff that's on the bottom, you know? They need a long neck uh, to reach into the water. Uh, the vertebrae of their tail is, you know, like our vertebrae in our, on our tailbone, we call it, uh, is pretty fixed. We don't use it for anything purpose. You know, it doesn't help, doesn't make us turn better when we're running or anything like that. But in birds, the vertebrae in their tail is are free to move. So if you've ever watched birds chasing something, especially like uh, when in spring when you have males that are, uh, well, that stop. Uh, if the males that are chasing each other, you know how they're quick, they're, they're trying to avoid each other, or if you, and especially if they're flying through a tree, they don't run into trees. I mean, they're just dodging each branch, you know, as they, as they go around. So that tail, they can move really fast. Um, we had a bird in, uh, where I lived in Oklahoma, called the scissor tail flycatcher. And uh, on its tail, in addition to that, it had long feathers. The feathers were probably about that long. The bird itself, body was only about this long. But it had feathers that would be about this long. And they looked like a scissor on the end of it, of them. And they would use those tail feathers very effectively in chasing a fly and catching it midair. So that's why we call them scissor tail fly catchers. Uh, <clears throat> the trunk vertebrae, you know, that, that make up their their body. You know, if you you know, they have this big keel bone that runs right through the middle. That we that's the the breast breastbone or the breast meat of. You know, the white meat that most people like for a chicken, that's this part here. Those are the muscles that they use for flight. Uh, now, if it's a bird that flies, flaps its wings a lot, like, um, like pheasants and ducks and geese, I don't know if you've ever eaten those birds, that meat is not white. It's all, it's all reddish colored. It's like regular meat. Why? Because it has a lot more blood vessels in it because they're actually used. Chickens don't fly. They may, yeah, they may flap their wings a little bit, you know, but other than that, they don't fly. And so they don't need a lot of blood vessels in there. Uh, so they have this sternum, this keel bone, that some people call it. Uh, but they're, some of these are all fused together to make them nice and strong so that those powerful muscles we don't have muscles that would be anywhere near strong enough to be able to fly, even if God had made us have wings. So, angels can fly not because they have this big chest, because if it was like birds, they'd have to have a big chest, they'd have to have hollow bones, and there'd be a lot of things that would make that impossible for them to fly. But angels are also spirit beings. Can they take on human forms? Yeah. Uh, Abraham saw a couple of them they came to, to visit with him, uh, remember? Uh, one of them was probably Jesus in his pre, pre-incarnation form. Uh, so angels can take on human forms, but they're usually not flying at that time. These, these were walking, came walking up to Abraham. Now, what happened before they st started walking, I don't know. Uh, so they have all kinds of modifications that allow them to be able to to fly uh, and have the muscles attached at the right spot to make their wings nice and strong. Uh, if you watch, you know, like an eagle picking up a pretty large fish, uh, it takes a lot of power to lift that, that, that eagle and the fish off. So they, they have very powerful wings. That, that breastbone, the keel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they also have a wishbone, which kind of corresponds to our collarbone. Uh, but it's 
shaped a little bit different than ours. You know, it kind of comes out like this. Ours, ours is flatter. So here would be the, you know, a skeleton of a bird. And here is, this is the part where the white meat's attached to the chicken, right here. Uh, and the keel bone. They have a clavicle that's, that's this part right here that we call the wishbone. You know, you can, I mean, people used to grab a hold of it and break it, and then if you, if, you, if you give one side to somebody else and then you broke it, whoever got the bigger part got to make a wish. That's why they call it wishbone. Uh, okay, and then in the neck we said they have just as many bones in, a, in like a stork or a sandhill crane or whatever, your long neck bird. As, as the hummingbird. They all have the same number of bones, it's just the hummingbird's a lot smaller. Okay, there's the tail vertebrae uh, that is flexible. Ours is kind of curved down underneath between our legs is where our tailbone is. Okay, but we don't have a tail actually like they do. Uh, now, remember when we talked about the different animals that we use the word like maxilla and mandible and maxillary pads and stuff like that. Well, we're using those same words in a lot of animals. Your upper jaw is your maxilla. Your lower jaw is your mandible. And remember in the crayfish that we just finished dissecting, which way did the mandibles move in a crayfish? Side to side, right? They just kind of shred it like this whereas ours go this way, okay? So the top, the, the, where the beak is attached to, that's the maxilla, and then the lower jaw is the mandible, okay? So they have this, we use the same names for different animals and they look differently. 